Annihilation of Caste by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Part 22 Your Jat Path Thotak Mandal has adopted this line of attack. And it is a direct and frontal attack. And I congratulate you upon a direct and correct diagnosis. And more upon you having shown the courage to tell the Hindus what is really wrong with them. Political tyranny is nothing compared to social tyranny and a reformer who defies society is much more courageous than a politician who defies the government. You are right in holding that caste will cease to be an operative force only when interdining and intermarriage have become matters of common course. You have located the source of the disease. But is your prescription the right prescription for the disease? Ask yourself this question why is it that a large majority of hindus do not interdine and do not intermarry why is it that your cause is not popular there can only be one answer to this question and it is that interdining and intermarriage are repugnant to the beliefs and dogmas which the hindus regard as sacred caste is not a physical object like a wall of bricks or a line of barbed wire which prevents the hindus from commingling and which has therefore to be pulled down caste is a notion it is a state of mind the destruction of caste does not therefore mean the destruction of a physical barrier it means a notional change caste may be bad caste may lead to conduct so gross as to be called man's inhumanity to man all the same it must be recognized that the hindus observe caste not because they are inhuman or wrong headed they observe caste because they are deeply religious people are not wrong in observing caste in my view what is wrong is their religion which has inculcated this notion of caste if this is correct then obviously the enemy you must grapple with is not the people who observe caste but the shastras which teach them this religion of caste criticizing and ridiculing people for not interdining or intermarrying or occasionally holding intercaste dinners and celebrating intercaste marriages is a futile method of achieving the desired end the real rem- remedy is to destroy the belief in the sanctity of the shastras how do you expect to succeed if you allow the shastras to continue to mold the beliefs and opinions of the people not to question the authority of the shastras to permit the people to believe in their sanctity and their sanctions and then to blame the people and to criticize them for their acts as being irrational and inhuman is an incongruous way of carrying on social reform reformers working for the removal of untouchability including mahatma gandhi do not seem to realize that the acts of the people are merely the results of their beliefs inculcated in their minds by the shastras and that people will not change their conduct until they cease to believe in the sanctity of the shastras on which their conduct is founded no wonder that such efforts have not produced any results you also seem to be erring in the same way as the reformers working in the cause of removing untouchability to agitate for and to organize intercaste dinners and intercaste marriages is like forced force feeding brought by artificial means make every man and woman free from the thraldom of the shastras cleanse their minds of the pernicious notions founded on the shastras and he or she will interdine and intermarry without your telling him or her to do so it is no use seeking refuge in quibbles it is no use telling people that the shastras do not say what they believe believe to say if they are grammatically read or logically interpreted what matters is how the shastras have been understood by the people you must take the stand that buddha took you must take the stand which guru nanak took you must not only discard the shastras you must deny their authority as did buddha and nanak you must have courage to tell the hindus that what is wrong with them is their religion the religion which has produced in them the notion of the sacredness of caste will you show that courage